This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello, welcome to my channel. I want to do something a little bit different for this video. Usually I show you guys my art and process and stuff like that, but this time I wanted to show you my art book collection, which is something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time now. And I love my art books and I wanted to share them with you guys. So in this particular video, I'll only be showing you some of them, not all the ones that I've collected over the years, but in future videos, hopefully I'll get to some other ones which I have put in separate files for now. Okay, so these are the art books that I'm going to be showing you guys and I apologize for that weird looking halo effect on the camera. I dropped my phone recently and I think that was the result of that. But anyways, so yes, these are the art books that I picked. They're definitely not the only art books that I own. I actually have quite a few more and I wanted to save some of those for another video, especially the ones that are more on the instructional side of things and the ones that I got from Kickstarters. These are mostly art books that I've gotten sometime in my late teens and like over the course of the last decade, mostly from like a ton of them I got from conventions and from a little art book shop that is art book shop. Yeah, that was across the street from Sheridan College where I went for animation. So yeah, a lot of the books that I got were actually influenced by animation, but also I didn't include a bunch of the art. Anyways, I, I keep going off track. So yeah, these are the books I'm gonna be showing you and I'll go over the artists, what I love about their style, show you a little bit inside the art books and essentially just let you know like what kind of influence it ended up having on my artwork over the years. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this little art book tour, which I've been really excited to film for a long time now and I finally got around to it, so. Yeah, let's get to it. All right, so the lighting is pretty perfect today. Very nice weather out here. And I'm very glad because otherwise I have super terrible lighting in the room. So yeah, I wanted to start with these two books because I think they're like one of the oldest books that I have in my collection. I don't know if you can really call these I guess they are art books, yes. They have a lot of instruction in them, but they're more like collections, as you can see. And I found these, I believe, in like regular bookstores. They're one of the first books of this kind that I have ever seen, so I'm really, really glad to have stumbled upon them. There's actually a third one in this particular series that I do not have that my friend has that was hugely inspiring to me. I wish I could show it to you guys, but unfortunately, I do not own one of those. And these are quite old, so they could be possibly out of print at this point, I'm not sure, but yeah, I'll start with this one. So I'm just going to do a quick flip through. It was such a delight to find these at a regular bookstore because one of the interesting things about these books that I love so much is that they showcase a pretty wide range of styles that are very different and they also don't constrict to digital or traditional, so you can see a huge mix of both. And the subject matter is also very, very wide. So there's definitely a lot of things to look at here. And even though these are really old books, some of the techniques utilized by the artists are still quite prevalent these days as well. Like this is one of the first times I've ever seen a 3D model being used um, first for this type of environmental painting. But yeah, so I also wanted to mention that brevity is not my strong suit and I am going to have to try very hard to not linger too long because I have this huge stack of books. But also I do want to be thorough and show you guys everything that I love about these art books. So yeah, this particular artist, Opon, um, was a very big um, influence I would say at some point way back in the day but i i really really love the soft kind of watercolory look to this artwork even though it is digital but yeah i was a big fan of the line art as well it seemed kind of on the looser side and not as tight as you would usually see in this type of artwork lots of really incredible character designs and like i said the watercolor look i am a huge fan of something something actually i want to revisit like i haven't looked at these books in a very long time and i i love the the uh rendering on some of these and yeah it's pretty unique also they have stuff like this which is super random but also really interesting to look at more like pictorial type of stuff i don't know what that word means i just used it <laughs> because i thought it seemed to apply but don't hold me on that one but yeah okay so let me hurry this along i'm just gonna find a 
couple of the other ones that I really loved. Okay, this artist really stood out to me. Again, as you can see, I have a preference for this soft watercolor type of coloring. And this is also digital, which is surprising because this looks pretty convincing as actual watercolor, I thought. And I do like the simplicity of the style as well as the very nice subdued color choices. And the flow is really beautiful in these pieces as well. So yeah, I really, really quite like this artist. And I believe for this art book, that's about it. Um, and yeah, I actually really like this artist as well. There's this one piece in particular that I found super inspiring back in the day. This really takes me back. I do wish they had more, select, uh, more of a selection of artwork because it's a shame that there's so little. But anyways, yeah, I believe this is a traditional artist and I really, really like these. Some of these comic pages, really nice. So yeah, that's it for this art book. Moving on to the next one, which is this one. I believe I got this one several, or not several, but like a few years after the previous one I just showed you. And again, I'm gonna do a quick flip through just like this. And then I will go back and linger on some of the artists whose work I specifically found the most attractive but yeah these books are great there's very little um uninteresting stuff in them okay so i'm gonna start with this artist who is tatsuki kitanaka um also goes by cannabis works i think and i have actually i have another art book of his i'm gonna go back to it but yeah i found this stuff really cool i love all the machinery and you might not think that this is stuff that i really really love because it's so different from the stuff that i do but you know i don't know my my taste in art is kind of all over the place <laughs> yeah i really like the monochromatic look as well super solid um work honestly uh the depth is incredible and really really bizarre but super entrancing type of scenarios i find like you could totally picture this as a world that these characters live in and very very convincing i love stuff like that like the storytelling the little storytelling elements um yeah and i also quite like this artist although it's not my favorite type of art style i still like some of the simplicity in these ones and I, I really like the faces that this artist draw. I think the, they're very, um, what's the word? I don't know, just charming, but yeah. Like I said, very far from my actual style. So didn't have much of uh, an effect on the way I draw, per se. This guy I hear is buddies or was buddies with uh, Hyung Tae Kim. If you guys don't know who Hyung Tae Kim is, He's also in this book right here and i also have one of his art books which i will go through next was a huge huge influence on me when i was like 14 15 16 around those years ages ago yeah i was absolutely blown away by his work and i'm sure many people were around that time he was very popular amongst the I don't know in the art community i guess but yeah incredible uh rendering i think he's pretty much like one of the first artists to do this type of style as far as i know maybe he just got super popular popular or and didn't actually like spearhead this type of art style movement but who knows anyways love him take him still a big uh inspiration in a lot of ways <laughs> yeah um Let's see if there's anyone else in this book that I particularly like. I think that's about it. Everything else is nice, but not my favorite. So I'm just going to move on to the next art book. I think I'm making relatively decent time, although there's still a lot of stuff to go through. Okay, so I just want to take a quick moment to tell you guys about this video's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a platform made by and for lifelong learners and creatives looking to expand their pool of knowledge or simply try a new hobby and a subscription grants you unlimited access to all the classes that are available on the platform. I myself love Skillshare and from time to time when I have a free minute I like to check out their classes. Recently I have been really thinking about upping my journaling game. I am a huge fan of journaling and I do it somewhat regularly although my purposes are just for 
planning things and it's more like a planner but i do want to expand into travel journaling and such and i've seen many classes on uh, skillshare that i'm really looking forward to checking out once i have a little bit more time so i can expand that side of my hobbies I would highly recommend Skillshare, they have a ton of classes on all sorts of subject matter, art included. Tons of art classes, I have watched some of them, they're great, I actually have a class of my own on Skillshare as well and am in the midst of working on some new ones that I am planning to publish sometime this year. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of premium membership. Skillshare is super affordable and you can support your favorite creators directly by just watching their classes on the platform. Find the sign up link in my description below and again thank you Skillshare for sponsoring my videos. So I'm going to briefly show you these <laughs> horizontal books that I have. I have them in a separate pile, obviously, because they do not fit the formatting of the other books that I have. So, yeah, I'll just be brief about them because there's still so much to go through. But, yeah, these two are art books, art of, from the animated movie called Tech on Concrete, which was a huge, huge inspiration for me. I love that movie a lot. And the amount of work that went into is absolutely incredible and so I bought these two art books this one containing a lot of the background paintings and the pencils for the backgrounds absolutely insane amount of work here lots to look at and then this one which contained most of the painted backgrounds like from the actual production uh and yeah I, I guess that's the majority of the book there's so much to look through here and uh yeah it's it's really really cool stuff so Love these books, totally recommend them for inspiration for background painting. I don't know if that would even be inspiration, it's kind of just horrifically uh, intimidating looking at those books. But yeah, this is the um, Cannabis Works art book. Like I mentioned, I love this artist's storytelling elements in the backgrounds and the how. The characters really, really have such a... Such an interesting feel to them. But yeah, there's so much to look at in this particular art book. I, I'm actually really looking forward to sitting down and looking at this one. Very atmospheric type of uh, tonal work. Absolutely love. And very nice compositions too. So yeah. And this one, which I believe is... I don't really know what this art book is actually. I just saw it and I thought it was lovely so I purchased it. But I think it is from, it's either of an artist or from a specific movie, like five centimeters per minute or something. I remember it was like this gorgeous animated, uh, obviously Japanese movie about some sort of romance from what I can, ima from what I can remember. But yeah, the, um, the backgrounds are absolutely gorgeous in this book so yeah very inspiring to look through lots of detail and so otherworldly looking yes so that's this art book and now moving on to the next one. Oh yeah so like i mentioned hyung tae kim being a huge inspiration for me way back in the day this was one of my prized possessions i bought this book um i believe in my late teens so it was not easy for me to find the money to spend on art books at that time so i saved up for quite some time to be able to afford this art book and i looked through it uh, a billion times around then so yeah i was very inspired by this artist uh what okay so i'm just gonna run down my favorite things about him obviously really cool rendering style kind of looks like oil paint or something like that and so the the, the thing that really stood out to me about his art was the character designs. I really love his limited color palettes and just super nice color choices and really unique fashion design type of choices. Like super bold and I mean I guess that's kind of a common thing in Japanese games in general like RPGs and stuff. But I feel like he really just takes it to the next level like some of these are so crazy. And, like, you can clearly see a lot of influence in his work from, I don't know, some sort of, like, ancient traditional elements, uh, like, decorative type of stuff you might see on buildings or something like that. Very ornamental. I love it. 
Um, and obviously this one in particular, very Korean also, which is cool. Um, yeah, I, I still absolutely love his stuff. I think he went a little bit crazy with the proportions later on, and his uh, stuff started to look kind of wonky, but regardless, I'm still a big fan. And yeah, anatomically, he definitely takes a lot of liberties, and some of it looks quite strange, um, especially the more... I guess the, the later work. I haven't kept up with his work at all, so I have no idea what it looks like these days. But this is some of the older stuff, some of the first things that I've seen. Like, just beautiful fabric rendering, and also the way that he did hair was amazing. So, still love his art. It uh, definitely had a big, big effect on me, especially when I, like, since I discovered his stuff when I was like 14 or something, I was just, my mind was blown and I was obsessed. So, yeah, that's him take him. And so now I'm gonna move on to a couple of other smaller books like this one. I just saw it randomly when I was uh, browsing the art book section in the dealer's room at some random convention that I no longer even remember. But I came across this comic by this artist named Benjamin, I believe a Chinese artist. And yeah, I really, really love his painterly, loose, super loose style. And um, there's a lot of artwork in the back. But it's kind of freaky that just reminds me of me or something anyways <laughs> but yeah um i really like the loose type of uh not overly clean rendering painting type of style i don't know it is pretty dated like these are this art book's quite old but yeah it's uh it's still really kind of stands the test of time and i've never really gotten into digital painting much myself not to this level of painterly approach anyways but i've always found his work super inspiring and uh maybe someday i will experiment a little bit more with that side of things so yeah so i'm going to show you a couple of art books by claire wendling one of my absolute favorite artists um, I don't know how much of her influence actually made it into my personal work, but I certainly love looking at her stuff for inspiration. It is quite different from the type of stuff that I draw, but um, really cool that you can really see the Frank Frazetta influence in her work. I'm sure she was a big fan, is a big fan, <laughs> and yeah, so I really, really uh, just love seeing the thread of influence. Uh, throughout history and um, other artists work so yeah these are super interesting to look at so it's like I think uh, these are some old sketches of hers that she redrew more recently in her updated style which is a really cool idea for an art book honestly and yeah she just draws these absolutely beautiful shapes um, her rendition of the female body is gorgeous and very very inspiring yeah i highly recommend this book um iguana bay i think it's one of my favorite ones that i have i have about three of her art books kind of wish i had more honestly but yeah there's a lot of really cool stuff to look at here and um i really like the side by side the older and newer stuff um, and obviously she is absolutely masterful at drawing animals. Like the movement she captures is insane. So yeah, this is the one and this is the other book that I have of hers. This one's really cool too. I think it's kind of a collection of a bunch of fairies. Like uh, she says it's her favorite subject matter. I believe I read that in an interview or something. And yeah, so many neat design choices and really, really cool shapes. Yeah, I absolutely love her shape. Shape design, it's gorgeous. Something to aspire to, for sure. Just look at that pencil work. And the texture. I love the textures that she creates with the pencil. Such a simple, like, just one tool, but she creates so many different textures. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, I can see that this video is starting to get a little lengthy, so I'm just going to get a move on and move on to the next art book which is jc leyendecker 
one of my favorite artists as well. Obviously, I told you guys that this whole pile is some of my favorite artists, so I'm gonna stop repeating myself there, but yeah, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with his work. Some of my favorite things about his work is the ability, like, his crazy stylization, and especially when it comes to clothing and folds, absolutely incredible. I have so much to learn from her. I'm, I've been meaning to, like, do some studies. I love this art book, but I do feel like it's just not enough. I wish they blew up all of these images and had one page for each of them because there's so much to look at. But yeah, unfortunately, they've all, all been kind of condensed into these tiny thumbnails, which is regrettable. But yeah, there's still a ton. I love this art book. And yeah, his technique is crazy and absolutely like... I don't know, I feel like it's kind of revolutionary to paint like this, but mm, I do see that, you know what, I'm pretty loose on the chain of influence here, but I can see John Singer Sargent here, although I don't know who came before whom, so yeah, I really gotta catch up on my art history. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, absolutely love Landecker, and I would recommend this book, it's, it's great, and it's got some interesting information too, like, for instance, he has a brother who's also an artist who did not become as famous, even though his work is excellent. Very interesting stuff to read about. Yeah, so moving on to the next art book. One of my favorites as well, Arthur Rackham. I really love his artwork. I don't know where to start. His technique is really mysterious. Um, there's a lot of this dreamy type of... Oh, I love this piece so much it's just such a unique quality and i don't even know where to begin describing it so i would highly recommend just browsing his work and just taking it all in really cool textures and especially love his depiction of trees all the gnarly roots and such and water like and the hair i don't know i don't know where to begin or end but look at this hair absolutely beautiful so much movement and the composition is so interesting too and these waves hmm. i'm a big fan of the antique type of look too because these are quite a bit older illustrations so it's hugely inspiring for me to look at and i do think i tried to emulate some of his stuff into my own work some time ago but i don't know how well that actually translated <laughs> and so the next artist is james jean everybody everybody's favorite of course very popular and hugely influential artist especially these days i can see a lot of his influence in so many people's work and myself included probably because i love his art i have a bunch of art books from him these are just two um, I have a couple of other little ones, but yeah, so this one is awesome because it's got all these comic book covers that he did for the series called Fables, which I have never read, but looks pretty cool. Um, huge variety of approach. Um, I mean, he definitely has a very unique style that shines through everything he does, but I really like how he um, constantly mixes traditional with digital very often in a lot of his work, which is pretty cool. And he's an excellent artist at both mediums. I'm really attracted to artists who use a lot of different mediums and are excellent at all of them. So, yeah. Love James Jean. And this art book, Rebus, which is super cool. I think this one has um, mostly his personal. I'm not sure which, uh, what exactly what collection of works this is because he's so prolific he's got just so much art out there it's absolutely insane but yeah there's so much to look at this one time i threw on one of my favorite albums and i just looked through this book for like 40 minutes it was a great experience highly recommend throwing on some psychedelic music and looking through this <laughs> so next i'm going to show you this book which I'm sure many of you have probably seen before. It's the art of Kiki's Livery Service. And 
I don't know. I really, really love Studio Ghibli. And of course, this art book is absolutely delightful to look through with all the backgrounds and the, the little character designs. Super inspiring. And on this note, I also wanted to show you this book, which is the Storyboards Collection. I have several of these, and this particular one is Spirited Away. And this is amazing to study as an animation student and as a comic artist. It's got all of Miyazaki's storyboards for Spirited Away and the, you know, the movies of the other art books. My vocabulary is starting to uh, escape me because I'm getting a little bit tired. But yeah, this art book is incredible. I don't know if it con I don't know if this is an art book. I guess it's just a storyboard collection. But yeah, there's definitely a lot to learn here in terms of composition and movement and framing and such. Absolutely love looking through these. It's a well of information. I really I really wish that they had translations for these notes. That would have been incredible. But yeah, I learned a lot from these. All right, so next I'm going to show you this artist super inspiring his name is enrique fernandez and i have a bunch of his books these are most of them and i just found them in the art book shop across the street from sheridan and i just absolutely fell in love with the style never seen his stuff before but it's incredible super expressive i love the amount of work that goes into all of his comics there's so much to look at, the color choices, uh, the atmosphere and such. Very different from the type of stuff I draw in terms of character design. It's like a lot more expressive and cartoony looking, animated I, I suppose is the word for it, but yeah, I, I really love this stuff. And it looks very traditional even though he does it digitally, so that's really cool too. So there's that one, just gonna do a quick flip through of this one as well. And I really love his ability to change up the style as well, because this is another one of his comics. And this one looks very different. It looks more like watercolor. And in fact, it's still shocking to me that it's not traditional. Like, look at this. This just looks like straight up traditional watercolor. It's incredible, but yeah, it's all, it's all digital apparently. <laughs> Yeah, this is one of my favorites of the books that I have of his. The rendering on the backgrounds and the characters is really cool. And obviously the color choices are incredible as well, so super inspiring art book slash comic to look through. And I also have a couple of these. These are a little bit more recent, although I do think he has a couple of other art books slash comics released since then. One of these I actually backed as a Kickstarter, which is really cool. And yeah, this one has, so I'll, just, I'll just show you guys this one. It's got a uh, different type of style again. This one looks more like ink heavy, maybe some gouache in there. Look at these rocks. It's incredible. I, I'm still honestly just blown away by his art. And I haven't looked at it in quite some time. So now my mind's just being blown all over again. <laughs> Yeah, I highly recommend looking, checking out his work, it's, uh, it's amazing. And I have a little treat as well, which is this book, I believe it came with the Kickstarter, or maybe I bought it separately, I don't remember, but yeah, this is a treasure trove because it's got the rough work for his first Brigada book, which is always incredible to look at, I love looking at other people's rough stuff. And obviously it's super skillful and super clear, very inspiring comic layouts. And it's also got a bit of a character design stuff in the back as well. I love these. I actually believe I did a couple of, or one illustration that was super inspired by this type of inking, which, you know, I would love to actually bring, bring back into my work. Yeah. Okay, so the next book I'm going to show you is Ronald Cyril. Uh, super different from the other stuff I've showed you, but I at some point just really got into his work and I, I still love it. 
I did a couple of, um, I, I believe I had an assignment back in Sheridan where I had to pick an artist who's, uh, and uh, draw like three or four pieces in their style. And I picked Ronald Cheryl specifically because I could not think of anything more different than the type of stuff that I draw and I'm comfortable with. And it was honestly an incredible experience for me because it was really tough to emulate this type of style because it's so loose and expressive, like the opposite of how I draw, but it was a lot of fun. And I totally recommend you guys do something similar because it makes you learn a lot about your own shortcomings and um, barriers as an artist. Yeah, really, really cool artist classic work <laughs> yeah so next i am going to show actually i'm pretty much near the end of the pile i only have two books left which is great this book is not an art book it's an illustrated novel this one is in french actually one of my good friends nina got me a copy of this book as well but in russian which is really cool so i have two copies of this and at least i can read one of them now the russian one i cannot uh, really understand french unfortunately but yeah this art book is lovely sorry book Il illustrations in, in this book are incredible i absolutely love this artist such an eerie and mysterious quality to her work i let me find some of my favorite ones and i really love how um there's some of these little illustrations peppered in as well as these big double page spreads and such so yeah lots of different ugh, i love these birds i have a thing for birds <laughs> so cute i really like the um reoccurring theme of these like vein like little plant plants or veins who knows right really really mysterious uh cool symbolism type of stuff and gorgeous compositions really unique style and also a really cool um combination of strictly traditional pencil work and a digital overlay which is something i really love like i've mentioned before <sighs> look at that gorgeous and if any of you guys have uh, not read the story carmilla by sheridan le Fanu, i totally recommend it's such a such a nice little moody read it's a novella so it's not very long and i believe it's the predecessor of dracula which is kind of cool and the story is very captivating i love it so yeah let me let me see this if i can find my favorite one mm. Yeah, there was this one portrait, I believe, that I just- Oh no, it wasn't a portrait, it was like a bedroom scene. Oh, let me find it, it was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Will I find it though? I don't know. I don't want to like- Oh, there it is, there it is. Look at that. I just think the composition is so brilliant and- all the little details and the mm. I, I'm a huge sucker for gothic horror as a genre in general. I love all the tropes and um, big fan. This is perfect. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys the last art book in this video, which is this one. It's actually my latest acquisition. And I found, I stumbled upon this artist, Gigi Cavanago, uh, kind of recently. I've never seen his work before, but I absolutely became like obsessed and I was just staring at his stuff for days on end until I found out about this book, which unfortunately is not in English either. But that's okay, because I just want to look at the art and I'm not too heartbroken that I can't read the story. <laughs> Yeah, I am in love with his line work and use of texture and just overall composition skills. Really, really beautiful stuff. So glad that I got this book. There's a ton of things to look through and I'm a huge fan. I really love the simplicity of the line work and how, how really loose and expressive it is. I am a big fan of that type of stuff. Want to bring some of that into my own work. And I've actually been trying to lately, but obviously nowhere near this level of expressiveness, but I'm going to keep on trying and 
yeah really really cool book and i love how much extra stuff is in here like little sketches and uh rough work some of the panels it's gorgeous i love the use of color too yeah i think the expressiveness is my favorite part about his work big fan yeah and that's about it i really hope you guys enjoyed looking through my art books and i'm gonna record a little outro video now so here we are at the end of the video thank you guys so much for those of you who actually watched the whole thing i hope you enjoyed my little commentary and looking through all the art books that i love so let me know what you thought about this video and if you'd like to see more similar videos to this where i just show you something i like and talk about it and yeah Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for continuing to support my channel and watching my content and I will see you in my next one. Bye!